Welcome back to DIY Guitar Making at Eric Schaefer Guitars. My name is Eric Schaefer, and today I'm going to show you how a truss rod actually works. Originally, steel string guitar necks were reinforced by inlaying strips of a stiffer wood like ebony. Later on, manufacturers switched to steel. There was the steel T-bar, and then there was steel square tubing, which looked something like this. But none of these solutions were adjustable until the compression rod. Nowadays, we often call this a single action or a one-way truss rod because it only adjusts in one direction. To counter the effects of a forward bow on the neck and bring it back into alignment, but there's nothing this type of truss rod can do about a back bow. Today, most modern guitars have a double action or also called a two-way truss rod because this can adjust both ways to counter either a forward bowed neck or a back bowed neck. So let's take a close look at the double action truss rod. So we have a flat bar at the top here to which two nuts are welded to each end. A threaded rod passes through the two nuts. And if we look real close at the threads on each end, you'll notice that they are threaded in opposite directions. This side is regular and this side is reverse threaded. So then because of those opposing thread directions, as I turn the truss rod clockwise, the threads are going to be pushing on the regular nut and at the same time pulling on the reverse threaded nut, which is going to force that flat bar upward. And if I turn it back the other way, I'm going to have the same effect, but in the opposite direction, now forcing the threaded rod to bow outward. Now let's see what this looks like in a guitar neck. The truss rod can be installed in the neck one of two ways. It can go like this, with the adjustment end at the tenon, you would adjust this through the sound hole, or you can flip it around and have it adjust at the headstock end. Either way, the truss rod is going to function exactly the same. First, let's look at it with the adjustment end at the tenon. So the truss rod sits just below the fretboard. Of course, here the fretboard is removed so we can see exactly what the truss rod is doing down there. And now I'm going to adjust clockwise. The first thing you'll notice is that a little bit goes a very long way. So now I'm going to adjust counterclockwise and let's see what happens. So because the ends of this aren't um, epoxied down to the neck and because the, the fretboard isn't here to hold it in place, nothing's holding this down. So I have to kind of, as I turn it, it's going to want to pop itself back out. You can see what hap what's happening here. Essentially the opposite thing is happening that was happening before. The ends are popping up while the middle is going down. And if we could see the threaded rod portion of this underneath, we would see that bowing downward. In fact, we can pull it out and, and you can see it that way. So this of course has the opposite effect that we had when we turned the truss rod clockwise. Now going counterclockwise, we are correcting a back bow. Whereas with going clockwise, we would have been correcting a forward bowed neck. And now just to flip this whole thing around, I just wanna show you real quick that when we have the truss rod the opposite way, meaning the adjustment end is here at the headstock, the direction that we turn it is exactly the same when you consider uh, clock directions, when you think of it as clockwise and counterclockwise. So watch as I adjust this clockwise, and you can see the same thing happens as uh, happened when I adjusted clockwise from the other end. And counterclockwise forces the ends to pop out like it did before. So everything's the same. That's important to keep in mind when you're making adjustments. You really don't have to think differently um, when you notice that your adjustment end is on one side or the other. It's always clockwise to fix a forward bow and counterclockwise to correct a back bow. 
Now, at this point, you might be thinking, isn't the truss rod going to rip the fretboard off? And the answer is no, or maybe, but probably not. Here's what I mean. The glue joint between the fretboard and the neck should actually be stronger than the surrounding wood if executed correctly, which means that if you were to apply enough force to actually break something, you would more likely break the neck somewhere along a grain line than break that joint apart. So really when a force is applied to the fretboard, it's just going to take the rest of the neck with it along for the ride. It's better to think of the neck and the fretboard as one. Now I say probably not because it's always possible that someone could just have a really bad joint at the fretboard, but I've never seen it happen. I've never heard of it happening. Don't worry about it. I wanna mention that not all two-way truss rods look the same. This was just one example of a two-way truss rod that we looked at today. Um, for example, this is another one right here. This functions exactly the same as this one. They just use an additional, here, I'll flip it over so they look symmetrical to each other. They just use an additional threaded rod on the top instead of the welded flat bar. So you can always tell that you have a two-way truss rod by the um, reverse threads, the opposite threading on each side of the rod. So there you have it, an inside look at the truss rod. As far as making adjustments to the truss rod, you really only wanna make small adjustments. That would be an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch at a time, check it, and then make more adjustments. Um, the real trick to good setup work and work on the relief of your neck involves knowing when to make adjustments to the truss rod and when to leave it alone. Sometimes it's not a truss rod issue, and that really is a topic that's a little too deep to get into today. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.